to be discussing the uh, seven feasts of Israel here. And since the Feast of Trumpets is going to be a part of our discussion, I thought a little introduction with my shofar might be appropriate. So uh, let's get into the discussion, should we? Okay, so we're going to be discussing the seven feasts of Israel today. And uh, you'll note that uh, that comes from the 23rd chapter of Leviticus. And in those feasts, um, there were what we call the spring feasts, which included Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, and Pentecost. And then there's also the fall feasts, which include trumpets, atonement, and tabernacles. Um, these feasts were given through Moses uh, nearly 1,500 years before the Savior's crucifixion. They were like dress rehearsals for events that would unfold between Passover and Pentecost in the case of the spring feasts. The Lord was crucified on Passover, lay in the tomb during unleavened bread, and was resurrected on first fruits. Pentecost unfolded some 50 days later. Many biblical scholars believe that the fall feasts will unfold at the time of the second coming. Okay, so let's move on to our next slide here. We're going to discuss the fall feasts of Israel. And we start with trumpets. It starts on the first day of the Hebrew month of Tishri. It's on a new moon and continues for 10 days. And last year it was on September 7th. So that gives you a little bit of a better idea of how it relates to our modern day calendar. Next we go to the Feast of Atonement. It starts on the 10th day of the month of Tishri. Uh, continues for five days. <clears throat> And last year, it was celebrated on September 6th. Now we go to the Feast of Tabernacles. It starts on the 15th day of the month of Tishri, continues for seven days, and was celebrated on the 22nd of, or began on the 22nd of September last year. So now let's uh, let's look at this uh, through this diagram, which Gavin Finley has provided for us. And we have the spring feasts over here. Uh, we note that on the 14th of the month of Nisan was when Passover happened. That was the Savior's crucifixion. 15th, he was in the tomb. This is unleavened bread. Um, Unleavened meaning that it doesn't molder, <laughs> it doesn't corrupt, uh, and and uh, leavening expedites the corruption, you know, of bread. But Christ was incorruptible, and so he is the unleavened bread. And then we have first fruits, which was the day that the Lord was resurrected. Then uh, some fifty days pass. And then we have the day of Pentecost on the month of Sivan. Sivan, okay, however you say that. And then we have the fall feasts over here. We have trumpets on the first day of Tishri. Atonement starts on the 10th day of Tishri. And tabernacles starts on the 15th day of Tishri. Uh, continues for seven days. And, uh, and, and so this whole fall feast thing here ends up unfolding in just 21 days. So what's the real question here? Well, let's have a drum roll. The real question is, if the fall feasts are fulfilled at the Lord's second coming, Will this all, in other words, all this that we've been talking about, unfold when the Lord comes to Adam on the almond? Or in other words, are the fall feasts 
and the meeting at Adam on the Almond, one and the same thing. So let's go to the text in Daniel and uh, find out what's happening at this meeting. He says, I beheld the thrones that were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. We see that there are a thousand thousand that minister unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. He says, the judgment was set, and the books were opened. The judgment set, and the books are open. So there's a process unfolding here. There's something happening here. There's, there's a, there are incremental steps that have got to be completed to lead up to what this is all going to unfold to be. He says, I saw in the night's vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom. So Christ comes to Adam and to this great assembly, and he receives back the keys that he needs to reign. Okay, so uh, let's go now and uh, see what Joseph Smith had to say. He did a little bit of commentary on this topic. He says, Daniel, in his seventh chapter, speaks of the Ancient of Days. He means the oldest man, our father Adam, who will call his children together and hold a council with them to prepare them for the coming of the Son of Man. Okay. He says, uh, he, Adam, is the father of the human family and presides over the spirits of all men. And all that have had keys must stand before him in this grand council. So again, a process is unfolding here. And a, a, a process or a sequence. And so Adam delivers up his stewardship to Christ, that which was delivered to him as holding the keys of the universe, but retains his standing as the head of the human family. Okay, so let's go to the summary here. If the fall feasts are to be fulfilled with the coming of the Ancient of Days and the Son of Man, which Daniel speaks about, we must conclude that the Lord's first appearance to his saints will be in the fall of the year. That's interesting, don't you think? And the above events will unfold over a period of 21 days. We propose that the Lord will most likely come to the Ancient of Days after the Feast of Trumpets, after the Feast of Atonement, and during the Feast of Tabernacles. And as evidence, we go to Revelation 21.3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. So this is his coming to his people. And apparently when he does, the tabernacle will be there as well. Okay, so before we go, just wanted to make you aware of two links to two other blogs on this same topic. And you can get to that through the interactive timeline. If you go to this dot right here and zoom in, you'll find those links. And you will find the uh, link to interactive timeline down below. So thanks for watching and uh, hope that uh, this has connected more dots for you. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks again.